International Trade Focus is brought to you by Goyle and Agricultural Development Bank. Coming up on International Trade Focus, we shall bring you highlights of the Ghana Investment Week at Expo 2020 Dubai. So the past six months has witnessed a massive outpouring of countries, business entities and individuals to the much talked about Dubai Expo 2020. This very place has taken center stage in the promotion of international trade and related business activities. And like many other countries, Ghana has been a key participant in the Dubai Expo 2020, represented by government and private agencies. And to crown it all, Ghana's president, Sanado Danka Kufuado, climaxed Ghana's participation with a number of investment-driven activities as part of Ghana's week at the Dubai Expo 2020. International Trade Focus, your most reliable platform for international trade information, is bringing you this special coverage from the Dubai Expo 2020 grounds. My name is Anas Pio. This episode promises to be exciting. Don't go away.
the role of the private sector in the development of Ghana is absolutely central and fundamental. The political tradition from which I come, the views that we have held about Ghanaian development have put private sector development and activity at the very center of our vision for Ghana and for our development. And what we are looking forward is to build prosperous and progressive nation, and very much inspired by the examples of countries like your own, where the private sector has been oh, extremely critical in bringing this country to where it is today. So we're determined to work hand in hand with the private sector, and that is why we've come here. Our country is a haven of peace and security in West Africa. The Five years in which I've been in office, I think we're in the third phase of it. The first phase was the process of rehabilitation and reconstruction that took place between 2017 and 2020. And in that period, we inherited an economy that had been growing at 3.4 percent. And by virtue of the work that was done and the clarity of the policies that were put in place, we were able to increase the rate of growth of our economy to an average of 7% in the years 2017, 2018, 2019. But then, like everybody else, came the pandemic and the virus uh, of COVID-19. That effort took us to the second phase, where our economy suffered all the disruptions that the economies of the world were subject to. And as a result of it, of course, was a significant decline. Industrial output, agricultural output, the rate of growth of the economy. Well, fortunately for us, and I think it's by virtue of the fundamentals that have been built in the first phase, we did not go into recession in Ghana. We had a positive rate of growth in 2020 when most of the world went into recession. Even though it was a modest 2.9%, we still recorded a positive rate of growth. So that was the second phase. The second phase being the disruptive impact of the pandemic on our lives and on our economy. As a result, two fundamental decisions were taken. One, the need to expand dramatically our health infrastructure system. As we discovered, much to my, my, my deep disturbance and fear in the course of the pandemic that our country was not well served by a broad-based infrastructure, health infrastructure system. As many as we were, we were about 260 districts in Ghana and it was 100, over 100 districts did not have a district hospital. So we formed the policy of Agenda 111, which is to build, in this period, 101 district hospitals to fill the gap so that every district in Ghana would have access to at least the basic, the basic infrastructure and well wherewithal of our district hospitals. The second major decision that was taken by us was in response of what has come to be known as vaccine nationalism. Many of the countries in Africa, and Ghana was an exception, suffered from inability to access the vaccines that came to be developed as a response to the pandemic. We find ourselves, because we were not ill-equipped to produce vaccines, having to go cap in hand around the world asking for countries that were blessed with the vaccine to give us some. It's a situation we don't want to be in again in the future. We have made arrangements with BioNTech of Germany to establish vaccine development facilities in Ghana and we're hoping that by the last quarter of this year we'll be up and running. But that's the second phase of what took place. We're now in the third phase, where we've launched
involves an economic recovery program, what we call the 100 billion CD Ghana Ubantan Park Cares Program, which has several focuses as the uh, objects of the economic recovery. Supporting commercial farming, and as much as possible, trying to attract young people into the commercial space. Building up our country's light manufacturing sector. Developing engineering machine tools and ICT digital economy industries. Fast tracking our digitalization program. And then developing our housing and construction industry. Establishing our country as a regional hub. And optimizing the implementation of our government flagship programs. Then, critically, creating jobs for young people and also for those who are disadvantaged. We believe that this is a, this third phase of these eight years that have been given by the Ghanaian people represents hopefully a very exciting phase for our development. believe that the investment climate that has been created in Ghana, which has been so conducive that today global auto, uh, manuf uh, car manufacturing giants, we're talking here, uh, Volkswagen, Germany, Toyota, Nissan, <laughs> Japan, Sinatra of China, of China, have all established assembly plants in the country as a, as a premium to be able to produce vehicles out of Ghana. Twitter is establishing its African headquarters in Ghana, and Google's first artificial intelligence center in Africa is located in Ghana. And these are to give you an indication of how the, the, the world of the multinational companies are responding to the investment climate in the country. The Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area is located in Ghana. The African Continental Free Trade Area represents, in the views of many of us, perhaps the most important single initiative that the African Union has taken since its, its birth. It's brought together something which many people thought was not possible, 54 countries of continent to agree on a trade agreement, to agree on the various rules and regulations that are being fashioned to make trading in that market meaningful. And it's brought together the 54 countries with a combined GDP of some three trillion dollars. As the commercial capital, as a country where the AFCFG Secretary is located, we want very much to leverage these opportunities, both as a gateway, not just to our country, but of course also into the continent, the region and the continent, and also to be a service and manufacturing and financial hub. On the continent. We're offering significant opportunities to foreign investment. One, to build the infrastructure that is necessary to link these 54 different markets. You can imagine what that would entail. Linking Africa up, rails and roads, Linking up its port infrastructures, and I know that this is an area where you've had achieved great success in this country. Also, providing the base for production within the African economies. Then finally, of course, as a market for the exports of foreign products and trade. We believe that these, with Ghana at the center, provide a great opportunity 
for people like you. We're very encouraged by the developments that have taken place between the Emirates, the, the Emirates and Ghana already. Over nearly $3 billion worth of investments have come from the Emirates into Ghana. The trade figures between us are impressive and they're growing. And we believe that the opportunities are there which can enable us to expand systematically both the trade between our countries as well as the investments that there are there. There are three significant programs of my government that I'd like to bring to your attention. One, which we call the One District, One Factory Policy. It's a program, process of rural industrialization, which will enable us, first of all, to reshape the structure of our economy from a raw material economy into an industrializing, value-added economy. Secondly, to generate, as a result, sufficient jobs for the young people in our country. At the same time, the industrial profile that we, we are developing also reposes on the exploitation of our mineral resources. We have considerable bauxite and iron ore resources, which have never been developed in a coordinated manner. So today, we've established institutions in the country that are responsible for this coordinated development of our bauxite and iron ore deposits. The second important flagship program that I want to bring to your attention is the Digital Ghana Agenda. We anticipate that the benefits of the fourth industrial revolution can assist us in measurably accelerating the growth of our economy, and also assisting us to bring even greater transparency and accountability to our public activities. And then finally, the program for transforming Ghanaian agriculture, which we call planting for food and jobs. As things stand today, a country that was a net importer of foodstuffs is today a net exporter of foodstuffs as a result of the success of the program. The country is offering you several sets of investment incentives. We have the incentives under our laws, the general investment laws of the country. We have the incentives under our free zones policy. We are creating opportunities for companies to locate in the free zone areas and have specialized uh, incentive to fiscal regime to assist. But at the end of the day, I'm standing up here because I want very much to build a stronger relationship between our business community and the business community of the United Arab Emirates. Through the prospects of our development in Ghana and indeed in Africa are immense. And we believe that a strong relationship between our two business communities be a very, very solid, satisfactory, and mutually beneficial path towards exploiting these opportunities. The UAE has always enjoyed warm and friendly relations with the West Africa partner. I welcome to events such as these that contribute to boosting economic ties between the two nations. The value of non oil foreign trade between the UAE and Ghana amounted to $2.7 billion in 2021, reflecting a 25% growth in comparison to 2020 and 56% in comparison to 2019 numbers. Moreover, Ghana is among the most important African markets for the UAE's non-oil trade. This is reflected by the fact that the UAE ranks seventh globally and the first in the Arab world among Ghana's trading partners. The UAE accounts for more than 4% of Ghana's foreign trade with the world of more than 75% of its total trade with the Arab world. 
In addition, Degree is one of the six most important export destinations for Ghana. And the first is Arab world. Degree accounts for 5% of Ghana's total export to the world. In terms of imports, Degree is the ninth most important source of market for Ghana's imports and contributes 33% of its total import from the world around the world. In terms of the investment, the value of Ghanaian direct investments in the UAE exceeds $5.3 million, $5 million by the end of 2019. And the value of the UAE's direct investments in Ghana totals nearly $300 million, facing the UAE as the ninth most important FTI source globally and the first in the Arab world. We can certainly imagine an even more prosperous partnership between the UAE and Ghana. We see great potential for diversification and power investment, especially in the agricultural sector, which employs more than 30% of Ghana's workforce. It's known for crops such as cocoa, coffee rubber, legumes, corn, cotton, potatoes, and many others. Meanwhile, its mining sector is known for the broad protection of gold, aluminium bauxite, and manganese. Regarding its investment environment, Ghana was ranked as Best place for doing business in the West Africa, according to the 2019 Ease of Doing Business report. The country also enjoys political stability, as reflected by its first ranking on the 2020 Global Peace Index in West Africa. These factors, coupled with the wide array of development taking place in the UAE economy, makes, it, makes this the right time to facilitate closer collaboration between the two countries. And this is where the significance of this business form lies in enabling the private sector of both the UAE and Ghana to interact with each other and learn more about the opportunities and centers offered by each other's market. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking this opportunity to shed more light on the development that's currently being witnessed by the UAE economy, following the introduction of a series of legislations and regulatory amendments that enhance the openness of our economy. The UAE announced the project of FTA initiative, a projection of our Golden Jubilee last year. It marks the country's milestone 50th founding anniversary with a 50 plan projects aimed at further diversification and strengthening our economy. All of these projects are designed to establish the UAE as a truly global destination and tested for world ideas and innovation. In addition to granting of the 100% foreign ownership projects on mainline, the recent restructuring of the countries. Entry and residency system now supports our national talent attraction strategy and reinforces the UAE as an ideal destination for work, investment, entrepreneurship, <coughs> education, and life. To give you an example, the new Green Visa category enables high skilled individuals, investors, and entrepreneurs, and top students, as well as graduates, to sponsor themselves. <coughs> Meanwhile, the new Freelancer Visa is the first federal visa scheme of its kind for self employed workers. Even before these policies came into effect, the UAE was known as a private global business and investment destination. Our unique, valuable position has been built on a solid education with global connectivity, strong financial reserves, large sovereign wealth funds, healthy international relations, consistent government spending on infrastructure, digital tra tra transformations, and innovation. Progressive economic diversification policy, multi uh, free zones, highly developed infrastructure, and open, tolerant society. As a result, several global indicators have recognized the UAE as best business ecosystem for being agility, the availability of investment capital for its conducive climate for establishing SMEs, surpassing several, several leading global economies. The country ranked first globally in the Global Entrepreneurship Index 2022 climbed three spots from its fourth global ranking in the last year's support. This rate of change is creating unprecedented opportunities in our market, and it's a very exciting time to be here in the UAE, especially if you are an entrepreneur or an investor looking for expanding your global footprint. Therefore, I invite Kenyans, businesses, and investors to actively engage with our Emirati counterparts to play influential roles in elevating the UAE Ghana ties to match our economic development aspirations to the next stage. So, uh, Your Excellency, please welcome to UAE and we look forward to a fruitful discussion and partnership. Thank you. Economic opportunity is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition to attract investments. You need to go beyond economic opportunity. 
And I think what Ghana offers is that beyond the opportunities that Ghana offers, we also have a stable democracy, which is important for investors. We also have a peaceful and secure environment, which is also very important for investment. Investors want to make money, but they want to stay alive and enjoy the fruits of their labor. But it also goes beyond that. We also have very skilled, trainable labor force. And we know that is a very important ingredient for attracting investment. Beyond that, we also have a wide network of infrastructure that supports investment, including roads, railways, energy telecommunications. And above all, we also have a full complement of other enablers that would help an investment deal to be competitive. I'm sure other African countries will talk about some of these same benefits. But I can guarantee you that there's only one country in Africa that offers all these as a package. You buy one, you get five free. And that is why we are different from the other countries. I'd like to re echo only one other point. The biggest project in Africa is the establishment of the African continental future. And as we've been told, Ghana has the privilege of being the host of the AFCFT. What this means to you as an investor is that if you locate a manufacturing plant in Ghana, you can reach the entire continent from that location, duty-free, quota-free. But it also goes beyond the African continental free trade area. Ghana has signed a free trade agreement with the European Union, which allows us to export duty-free, quota-free to the European Union. Again, it means that if you, if you invest in a facility in Ghana, you can reach the European market duty-free, quota-free. Apart from this, Ghana also is part of the African Growth and Opportunity Act between the United States and the continent of Africa, which means that if you invest in a manufacturing facility, you can export duty-free, quota-free to the United States of America, which is the world's largest consumer market. So if you add the population of Africa, 1.2 billion, about 460 in Europe, and about 360 in the United States of America, we're talking about a combined market of about 2 billion people, which you can export to duty-free and quota-free. And so we believe that the combination of these trade agreements which offers us market access to these very strategic markets is a compelling reason why Ghana should be an investment destination of choice. We know that great nations have followed the path of other great nations. We in Ghana would like to learn from what you have done in the United Arab Emirates so that we can strengthen our mutual cooperation and collaboration and then bring prosperity to our country. So you are very much welcome to Ghana. Thank you.
If you just tuned in, you're watching International Trade Focus coming to you from the grounds of the Dubai Expo 2020. We're bringing you all that transpired in Ghana's participation at the Dubai Expo 2020. Don't go away, there's more after this break. A warm welcome back. Now, Ghana climaxed its participation in the Dubai Expo 2020 by organizing a series of business forums and investment-driven activities. More on this coming up shortly. Don't go away. a spectacular business forum and after the forum we decided to speak with the CEO of the Ghana Free Zones Authority, Ambassador Michael Quay. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, madam. Um, so first of all, we want to find out, um, first of all, the relevance of Ghana participating in an expo and organizing um, business forums of this nature. Well, let me start by saying a good day to um, all your viewers and listeners and to espouse that the reason why we've taken part in such a program is simple. Ghana at the moment is at a stage where we had very fantastic economic growth in the last three years preceding 2020, an average of about 7%. And then we all know the dip that happened during the pandemic. What that simply meant was we had a growth now instead of 7% on average to just below 1% it was still positive. But we saw that the rest of the world and Africa mainly recorded negative. So the president of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Dodankwe Kufuadu, says we need to go on a rebound agenda. We need to be able to get out of the abyss and move upwards because even the countries that we go to for donor agency we go to for loans and so on are themselves affected big time so what is it that ghana can do to strengthen its economy we need to go for forums like this we need to attend the expo to show people about ghana and the way we can do that is being led by the president himself and that is why he attached that importance of coming here to dubai so among other things first of all as you saw um, Ghana's flag was shown on the Burj Khalifa. This is not an ordinary feat. And it gave us the opportunity to showcase Ghana on virtually the tallest building in the world. That's a big deal because then all of Dubai can see Ghana being showcased. So they'll ask the question, what is Ghana? Who are they? Then we will also be able to tell them the good story of Ghana, the open for opportunities, the fact that our opportunities are limitless in terms of our various minerals that we have, the resources that we have, but most importantly, the human resource. So in my space, for example, what we emphasize is we want companies to look at Ghana as a place for settlement in terms of production, in terms of services, in terms of development of enclaves. Why? Because Ghana is on latitude zero, longitude zero is the middle of the world in effect so if you come to ghana to do your business in terms of your logistics it's very easy to get to all the various markets in the world whether it's in europe america um, north america um, southern america southern africa mediterranean and then all the way through east africa to india and so on and so forth so by this venture what are some of the things that we have to tell them about? I'm sure you already know that Ghana, in terms of humanitarian, is one of the UN's main depots in terms of transfer of materials into Africa. We want to build on that. As a strategy, 
we want to look at areas like e-commerce so that the Ghana port itself does not just lie there in terms of even the airport, but we're able to use it to develop our e-commerce. We're able to develop our business of business process outsourcing, one of the best areas to get jobs for graduates. So we have people come and set up businesses in Ghana that are mainly servicing companies outside in the world. That creates jobs for Ghanaians, but we don't necessarily have to feed our market, which would not be able to sustain all the growth that we're looking at. But one of the most interesting things that we came here to talk to the UAE about is development of perishables market, i.e. if Ghana is just seven hours from Dubai, six hours from Europe, eight hours from America, and so on and so forth, what is so strategical about our location that makes us attractive? And that is where we came up with the fact that we all know that in terms of flowers, we all know in terms of fresh fruit, we all know in terms of fresh vegetables, these are things that are flown among and between countries very often. So Ghana is the location for you to conduct that business. And we are very serious about making Ghana one of the headquarters, or I should say the hubs, for the perishable industry, which fetch a lot of money all over the world. So these and many other things are some of the reasons why we came to the United Arab Emirates to strategically partner with them. Right, Ambassador, so in the spirit of driving investors into the country, can we talk about the export processing zones? Yes, I mean, export processing zones at the moment, we have changed that concept more into special economic zones. And it's one of the things that we're also partnering Dubai to do in this context. Look, if you look at us in terms of export, the value of trade is $900 million with the UAE at the moment. In terms of import, it's about $100 million. If you look at, again, in terms of export and import, we have about third and ninth in terms of ranking, respectively. So if this is the case, what can we do to improve it and make it better? One of the ways is by industry. An industry cannot come into your country if they don't have the special economic zones where they can park their businesses and be able to produce. Because people don't want to now go and have litigation, go and have disputes with chiefs and all the various problems that come with land tenure and land management. So that is why it's important that as you mentioned, export processing zones, or what is now termed special economic zones, is a concept that is developed by the country strategically to provide for those expansion, expansion and attraction that we are trying to get into Ghana. So let me give you a quick example. In Tema, we already know about that. In Kumasi, the space has now been secured. In line with the containers and the inland port, that is something that the government will have to push quickly so that it becomes more relevant. We are looking at Takradi, for example. We know that there's gas, industrial gas, that is in use at the moment. There are other companies who are using it. Why? Gas, lower gas emissions. Secondly, the carbon footprints. We know that we need that to be lower. But most importantly, price. Because our energy prices in terms of uh, kilowatts per hour is a bit high competitively. So if you're looking at 16 to 21 cents per kilowatt hour, I don't think it's competitive enough. But gas will help to drive that and bring that down so that it doesn't become too much of a problem. This is something that we need to look at. Then if you finish looking at that, we look at areas like railway. Railway is a very important aspect that we should look at um, because it would allow the transfer of goods. And even in the free zone space in Takradi, there's railway. Our free zone space in Shama, it's next to the sea. Other companies are already looking at jetties that will move the matters straight to the export um, processing area in the port. The export processing zones or the special economic zones will really help us to be able to improve um, making Ghana the destination for production. But madam, let me hasten to add one very important aspect. You know that at the moment, Ghana is the headquarters for the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. But that is just as a secretariat. What we are trying to do is, we are trying to now make Ghana the headquarters for production, the headquarters for the actual movement of goods 
onto the continent. So we want Ghanaian businesses, foreign businesses to set up in Ghana so that we will be the engine to move this very quickly in that direction. So that is a focus that we want to um, look at and see how best it will help Ghana to move even faster in terms of the industrial revolution and how to be able to um, recover from this situation of coronavirus, which we just find ourselves in. Ambassador, so finally, before we um, end this interview or wrap up on the interview, um, what does the future look like for the Ghana Free Zones Authority in terms of um, driving investments and um, promoting or boosting Ghana's export base or manufacturing base in general? I mean, the Free Zones um, concept is very simple. And you could see that the president mentioned it three times in his speech. It's about export. The only reason we'll give you those incentives is if you have more than 70% of your exports going out of the country. So we still give various incentives, not in the free zones, but in Ghana, to companies who export. The only extra we give is to those who export more than 70%. So whether it's above 70 or below 70, export is something that we want to promote in Ghana because it leads us to get more foreign exchange in line with the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. So uh, you generally want to find out um, the relevance of Ghana participating in an expo of this nature and organizing forums of this nature. I mean, platforms like this are important because they give uh, a country like Ghana the opportunity to get the access to a global network of uh, investors who have the capital and the expertise that we require to invest in some local areas of interest in Ghana. Agriculture, agro-processing, energy, healthcare, and related sectors. We may not have the capital locally, but we have the opportunity. So how do we organize ourselves and tap into global platforms like this so that they can come with their capital and expertise and Ghana can benefit from it? That's why we're here. Right, so we just witnessed um, the signing of a memorandum of understanding between Ghana and the UAE. Do you have any idea or do you have any information on the kind of business that we are looking at? I mean, for example, the one between trade uh, from our country and uh, the Ministry of the Economy of the UAE focuses particularly on uh, industrial expansion. And they will be exploring ways by which they can connect a number of um, uh, 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 manufacturers from the UAE to the Ghanaian market in furtherance of our One District, One Factory uh, initiative. Also, the one between GIPC and them allows our investment agency and their investment agency to collaborate on how uh, Dubai and Accra can become good staging grounds for investments from all over the world. And you will find that the details will have to be fleshed out for specific companies that will benefit from it. Now, um, trading under continental free trade has commenced officially. Um, what correlation do you find between um, some of these um, fairs or forums and the continental free trade? How can we fit or fuse all of this together in our continental free trade? In our conversation so far, anytime you tell somebody that the Africa continental free trade area is alive and working in Ghana, and across Africa. And what it means is that whenever you are doing business anywhere in Africa, you have access to the entire African market, one day excited. Two, when you show them the peculiar investment uh, attraction uh, pillars in Ghana, that makes Ghana a great staging ground to do business across Africa. They get more excited. So we're connecting the Africa continental free trade area to the Ghana agenda and trying to invite the world to Africa through Ghana. And I think so far the initial uh, points of feedback we have is encouraging. So finally, in, an, in a period where COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on world's economies, Ghana is not excluded. Um, are there some investment opportunities in general, apart from the UAE, Ghana, MOU? Um, ha have we been able to um, get any investment in general by attending this expo? Yes, yes, yes. Yesterday, for example, the um, I think the Inok Group, which is one of the energy uh, uh, hubs here in the UAE, signed um, an MOU with the Ministry of Transport to do some more work in the aviation industry in Ghana as part of the expansion of the West African and African markets. That's something that we are looking uh, to explore some more and actually bring home some benefits as quickly as possible. Today's signing of the MOU between trade here and, and, and the economy 
here will give us some more oomph in the one district, one factory agenda. Why? So that many districts across Ghana will have that industrial base around which economic activity can expand. We're looking forward to um, the full implementation of these MOUs back home so that you and I can benefit. Thank you very much. Thank you. This particular expo is like no ordinary expo. It's the biggest I have seen so far, and I think it's the biggest in the world so far. Um, the Dubai Expo 2020 is a huge one, comprising of 192 countries, which have all converged here to put their best foot forward, to sell their country, and that's exactly why Ghana is here, to show to the world what we have and what we expect the world to come to Ghana for. And so that's why we are here. It's been exceptional. We've had meetings, business meetings, we've had meetings with individuals. We, we are all over the place trying to tell the world, because the world is here, what we have in our country. And the Ghana Export Promotion Authority, um, what strides would you say you've made by participating in a fair of this nature? I know that um, you took center stage of it all in collaboration with um, agencies such as the GIPC and all of that. So what strides would you say that the Ghana Expo Promotion Authority has been able to make by participating in an expo of this nature? We have been able to bring some business community uh, members to this expo who have also found uh, other members of other countries who are doing particularly what they are doing. And so there have been business um, linkages, people have formed partnerships, people are talking, there's been orders. I'm so scared to even talk about some of the orders because only last night somebody asked me, can you ship to us here? thousand containers of pineapples a month and I said we may not be able to do it but we will try so as far as I'm concerned the market is there it is for us now to go back home and do our homework well because somebody is asking for a thousand uh, containers of pineapple where am I going to get it from it's difficult but then we can start from somewhere. So I didn't let that opportunity go. I just said, we can't do a thousand, but we can do some. And so we need to expand our raw material base. That is what I'm taking home with me. There's been a lot of orders that I know we can't meet. We need now to expand our raw material base and also add um, value to what we produce. So instead, I said to him, why don't you come and set up a factory here in Ghana? so that we can work with you to produce the juice that you want instead of cutting away a thousand uh, containers of pineapple to you every month. Come here, do the factory here, work with us, farm here. We will give you lands to farm. We will have people who will help you farm. Then you can produce your juice here and then send it out of the country. So it, it's been quite interesting and we are overwhelmed with what is coming. But we have to now position ourselves very well to take advantage of what we've come to see here. And it's always exciting when I hear information like this. And from expos or fairs that we participate in, you realize that um, the goodwill is there, the demand yes. is out there. But as you said, the capacity is a story for another day. So as I'm the CEO of the Ghana Expo Promotion Authority, you said when we go back, we need to do our homework well. So how can we strengthen our export space in Ghana? We have started as an organization, as an agency, we have already started doing some of these things. You know, we've been supporting the pineapple growers. We've even pineapple suckers. We've, we've helped vegetable growers. We've helped the, the coconut growers. I mean, we are doing a lot of interventions by way of crafts, fine arts, you name it. Every sphere, we are intervening. And so, I mean, we are on the right track, but it's just that when you come here and you get overwhelmed with all of these orders, then you don't know what to do. You think what you are doing is too small and you need to work even harder. So for me, it's like um, you've been fueled to go back and work even harder. What you're doing is small. Sometimes when you sit at home, you think that, oh, I'm doing so well. I've supplied this, I've done this intervention, I've put in so much, and it's not so much until you meet the world. And that is what is happening here.
we are not going back home with empty hands. So inshallah, I know that we are somewhere, we are going somewhere. Thank you very much. Now, the National Petroleum Authority is the body that regulates the downstream petroleum industry. And by the downstream petroleum industry, we mean anything from the refinery to the storage to the distribution of petroleum products. Now, to that extent, Ghana is seeking to establish a petroleum hub development corporation. In other words, we are seeking to establish a petroleum hub in the western part of Ghana, you know, where um, we, 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 our petroleum resources are generated. Um, and by a petroleum hub development corporation, we intend to create a market center, you know, within the sub-region for petroleum products. As you know, right now, all petroleum products are sourced from either Rotterdam or America or the Gulf or Singapore. Now, to tell you the truth, Singapore produces no oil, yet it has a petroleum hub and has become an important um, hub for the trading of petroleum products. We, as people who produce um, petroleum products, um, it will serve us well if we were to establish a hub in West Africa because it will make petroleum products accessible and cheaper you know, for the West African market. And like the president said at this forum, because we have also become the headquarters for the African continental free trade area, Ghana basically, um, in, in theory, and perhaps even in practice going forward, becomes, if you want, the commercial center for, for Africa. So the Petroleum Hub Development Corporation, it's a big project. It's going to cost us something in the region of $60 billion to establish. And this is made up of refineries, is going to be made up of all these chains of industries that rely that rely on petroleum products and all the byproducts of, of petroleum to develop. Now, when that is done, it is the National Petroleum Authority which is responsible for giving licenses, you know, to the operators in this hub. We are also the ones responsible for regulating their activities, setting the rules and regulations, and etc., etc and making sure that things work well within the petroleum hub. So to that extent, we are here, um, or if you want to use the political term, to campaign, you know, for people to come um, to establish industries and petrochemical industries within the petroleum hub of Ghana. And like the free zones people have said, there are incentives that we are dangling before these potential investors to encourage them to come. So if you ask me, that's why we are here. Right, so concerning um, the petroleum hub, what's the, the level of progress well, so far, government has been able to secure the land, huge expanse of land. Um, we have um, begun to lay out the infrastructure. Government will be responsible for laying out the infrastructure, the water, the roads, and all of the things. So that when people come, it's much easier. They don't have to go through the hustle of this. All of that has been established. And so we are moving to the next stage of actually attracting the investment. Indeed, a few people have begun to sign up. I know that um, two companies have already signed up to establish the refineries that we are looking for in this country. So a lot of progress is being made towards, towards that matter. So in an era where the COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on the economy, Ghana is not excluded. Um, what, what benefits will the petroleum have like this have for Ghana's economy? Well, of course, it will help to revive the economy. You are talking about an area that would employ thousands of people. So that alone is a major focus for absorbing the excess labor that we have um, on the market. And the more people are employed, the more um, whatever uh, economic gains to them and their families and so on. So it will help a lot of people out of the of the poverty bracket number two the important point is that i'm sure you know the examples of nigeria and other countries where they say that petroleum has become a curse rather than than a blessing for those of us who have come late to this petroleum business it is important that we learn from the mistakes of those who have gone before um, you know all the problems in this niger delta area where young people feel that um, the petroleum resources are being taken from their area yet they are poor they are unemployed and which has led to all this banditry and so on 
And so the Petroleum Hub Development Corporation is also supposed to resolve that challenge, you know, and, and to prevent our youth from taking up arms and claiming that resources are being taken from their area and so on. So it has all these, if you want, a chain effect you know, not just of re reducing poverty, but improving the infrastructure of the Western region, of reducing unemployment, and ultimately for securing the peace of our country. Right, so um, the relevance of the petroleum sector participating in this aside, let's look at the general relevance of a country like Ghana, an African country for that matter like Ghana, participating in an expo of this kind and organizing uh, forums of this kind to attract investors. Well, that one, um, it's non-negotiable that we should be here. It's non-negotiable. Um, we have always prided ourselves as being the black star of Africa, the gateway to Africa, the first country south of the Sahara to attain independence. We have all these accolades. But quite frankly, these accolades wouldn't make a lot of sense if they are not grounded in the economic liberation um, of the people. And so we are here to leverage on the advantage that we have. You heard people keep referring to us as the center of the world. We have a lot of all of these, um, if you want, um, natural and artificial endowments um, that have been bequeathed or bestowed to us either by nature or also by history. Now, we, have, we want to leverage on these historical and natural endowments um, to be able to give economic benefit and prosperity to our people. And that is why we are here. Ghana is growing. Um, independence, we were 6 million. Now we are 30 million and plus. So as we are growing, you need also to be forward thinking um, in how you bring prosperity to the people. Otherwise, um, instead of uh, the population growth becoming a blessing, it could also be, be a curse. Um, it's a double-edged sword, and we want to be able to prevent it from becoming a case by attracting the needed investment. Already the president has said, we are succeeding, quite frankly, in that respect. All these giant automobile companies of the world are now establishing in Ghana and producing cars out of Ghana. Um, now people are able to buy brand new car out of the factory um, in Ghana um, for less than a million CDs. Are you following me? So already we are beginning to see the benefits of Ghana opening itself up to the world to come and do business. So this is just, if you want, um, an added uh, step that we are taking in, in the journey that we are already on. I think the Ghana Standards Authority is very happy to be at Expo 2020 in Dubai. We are even happier that we are part of the presidential delegation. His Excellency made a passionate speech and I think his concluding statement after the press interaction was, was the best. He said, come and invest in Ghana because you make a lot of money and Ghana will make a lot of money. He also said that during the, during the speech. For the GSA, there are so many good sites. One, the automotive sector was heavily promoted by His Excellency. We are hoping to have investment so that we can do more homologation, make more business for GSA. But we also came particularly for a new business line which is opening up. The UAE authorities want to work with the Standards Authority and the Food and Drugs Authority to provide halal certification for food. Now, if Ghanaian companies are going to be producing halal certified food for exports, not just to UAE, but to the Muslim world, just look at the numbers and the potential. There is a big need for food from our part of the world. The, the, the market differentiator is going to be whether they are halal or kosher, based on the market you are sending them to. And we are going to invest heavily in obtaining halal certification for the GSE working in partnership with the Food and Drugs Authority, since we will need Food and Drugs Authority's involvement as well for the process. Once we have that, Ghanaian producers of all types of food, spices, meats, poultry, just name it, will have the halal mark in collaboration with the UAE authorities can export to Dubai, to Indonesia, Nigeria, Saudi, and indeed to the whole world. That for us is a big thing. I think we are looking at the construction sector. That is also going to be business in testing buildings. So all in all, it's been a wonderful expo. We see potential to open up Ghana for producers and manufacturers. 
we believe that with the AFCFTA starting, with GSA offering our law certification, with all the work we are doing in building, construction, and engineering, the future really is indeed bright, and we look forward to many, many more such collaborations. And it's a wrap for today's edition of International Trade Fitters. Join us same time next week for some more information on international trade-related activities in Ghana and beyond. International Trade Fitters is brought to you by Goal, Good Energy, ADB, Truly, Agric, and more public elegance and pediatric value resorts. So from the Dubai Expo 2020 grounds, we say bye for now. Join us same time next week.